I think at one time or another we've all questioned as to whether all that we see and, and are experiencing in our world has some sort of a rational plan behind it because we understand now that both the Republican and the Democratic Party in our country are basically run by the same people, the same money finances both sides. We now know, of course, through the work of many historians who have spent their life working on research to show us that both sides of world conflicts have always been financed by the same people. And as I've said before, there seems to be a a method to the madness going on in the world. We know, of course, that we cannot depend on our leaders. Our leaders are misleaders. There is a science that they're following. They have their own agenda, and it doesn't include you. Conflicts require money and cooperation. World conflicts require world banks, international monetary fund. Professional groups all have fraternal orders, doctors, attorneys, etc., have their own specific fraternal orders. In the banking world, it is the same way. They have a fraternal order. In politics, there is a fraternal order. However, we're not supposed to know anything about that because that's not our business. That fraternal order in politics and banking has been known for many years by those in the inside. It has referred, been referred to by different names, different times, and different countries. The best overall name that we can give to this fraternal order, which is running our country, politics, monetary, is Freemasonry. country, like so many before us and like so many after us, was in fact founded by Freemasons. Freemasonry has played a part in almost every government ever founded in this world. It is in operation today throughout the world. We want to establish first that what we're not talking about is Blue Masonry or the Masonic Lodges in your hometown. We're not talking about the Freemasons that live across the street from you. We're talking about a worldwide fraternal organization that is powerful enough, old enough, and wise enough to operate behind all governments in the world, behind fraternal institutions, monetary systems in the world. And yes, they are in fact connected for instance, the idea that our country was founded by so many Freemasons and Rosicrucians, among others, we ask ourselves, why do we fold the American flag in a triangle? And what does the pyramid or the triangle have to do with the American system of government on our dollar bill? If we remember that our Constitution was signed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is referred to as the Keystone State. The reason why Pennsylvania is the Keystone State because the Freemasons that founded this country were members of the Scottish Rite and in that Scottish Rite there is the Royal Arch Degree. The Royal Arch Degree and of course the Royal Arch if you do not know was originally because of the sun coming over the horizon in the morning made the Royal Arch. The Royal Arch degree of Freemasons has been continually and ever busy throughout the world with their Freemasonic endeavors. The United States, as I said, founded in its constitution in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania becoming the keystone of a Royal Arch. 
there is much concerning this, into, uh, this material that we need to look at. Who are the Freemasons? Why are there emblems and symbols throughout the world on flags and emblems and symbols throughout the world on all sides of conflicts? Uh, we might ask ourselves about the Red Cross, the International Red Cross as a Masonic organization. They always, in every conflict, are able to go behind enemy lines. Why is the Red Cross, the International Red Cross, able to go behind enemy lines in wartime and conflict? There's a reason. The International Red Cross out of London, connected with the American Red Cross, comes from the Red Cross of St. George, the cross on the British flag, the Red Cross. That also is a Masonic institution. You might want to ask yourself some very important questions about this point. For instance, why is Hollywood continually bombarding our country and this world with trash movies which betray violence, rape, crime of every kind, bloodshed? Why does Hollywood continue to pump out motion pictures depicting murder and violence and bloodshed? then turning around and saying that movies and tapes don't have any influence on young people's minds or on people's minds when the obvious is true that all tapes and movies influence people's minds ask yourself why what is the purpose for portraying so much violence and horror and gory bloodshed in motion pictures there's a reason for it you better think about it. Ask yourself also about the biological warfare going on in the world today. AIDS coming from out of nowhere into the homosexual community. What have homosexuals, what are homosexuals doing today that they didn't do 6,000 years ago? And why is it we all of a sudden in 1980s have AIDS. Is there any connection between AIDS and the Legionnaire's disease and biological experimentation going on with the CIA, the USIA, the NSA, and all the other government agencies that you don't know anything about? Is it possible that there could be some sort of a biological experiments going on, some of them going awry, some of them purposely allowed to go awry to see how far they will go. Is there any kind of a rhyme or reason for the things that are happening today? Keep in mind too that what the government, what your government pays for, it gets. If you are paid to do something for the government, they will extract from you exactly what they have paid for. When we understand that, then we look at universities and schools, government-financed institutions of education, and see the kind of students and the kind of education that's being turned out by these government-financed schools. Logic will tell you that if what is being turned out in those schools was not in accord with what the state and the federal government wanted, then it would change it. The bottom line is that the government is getting what they have ordered. They're getting what they have paid for. They do not want your children to be educated. They do not want you to think too much. That is why our country and our world has become so proliferated with entertainments, mass media, game shows, television shows, amusement parks, drugs, alcohol, and every kind of entertainment to keep the human mind entertained so that you don't get in the way of important people by doing too much thinking. You had better wake up and understand that there are people who are guiding your life and you don't even know it. 
And all American citizens, I think, have suspected something like this is going on. But we're all too busy trying to stay alive and live our lives. And after all, what can one person do about it? One person can do nothing. But a nation educated can do much. Why does Hollywood make motion pictures like Death Wish and Dirty Harry, always showing how regular citizens are misused and abused and tricked and deceived by their government, and then one lone guy has to stand up for what's right because the whole system is corrupt? Why do you think they make movies like that? Is there a message in that? I'll tell you why. It's very simple. First of all, these conspirators, these people, make the movies showing you what the problem is. Then they make the movies to show you what the solution is. They know that you are frustrated. They know that the people of America are frustrated because there is no law and order. But that's purposely designed. We're not supposed to have law and order yet. We're supposed to have crime and the immorality and the drugs and the murder and all the other things that we are besieged by. We're supposed to have that. If the government did not want it, it would not be here. Believe me, this is the most powerful government the world has ever known. They have, a, they have the ability to get a hold on Adolf Hitler 50 years ago. He had a standing army, the greatest navy. Air Force, military, secret underworld organizations operating throughout the world. But this government got a hold on Adolf Hitler because it chose to and it wanted to. And if you do not pay your income taxes, they will find you if you go to the Amazon jungle and they will make an example of you. They will find you and they will deal with you and you know it. But for some reason, they're unable to get a handle on drugs and the crime in the streets for some reason. There is a reason, and that's what we want to talk about. There is a method to the madness. You might also want to ask yourself why it is back in the early 70s, while no one was looking, NATO, the North American Atlantic Treaty Organization, changed its fatigue colors from the dark greens and dark browns, the fatigue colors or the camouflage colors, to light tan. Throughout the Western world, the colors were changed for the military from dark greens to light tan. Why? Because this government, along with its NATO allies, realized that there would be a war in an area where they would need camouflage, which would be light tan. So quietly, they changed that. They changed the color, and you didn't know anything about it. You want to ask yourself, too, where did Adolf Hitler and the communist government today get their money? Who financed Stalin? Who financed Lenin, Trotsky? Who financed the communist revolution? You might want to ask yourself, what part did American Wall Street play the international bankers in New York, in Switzerland, in London, what part do they play in financing people like Hitler, like the communist movement, and God knows what else they're financing throughout the world? Why is it that drugs are brought into this country daily and we're not able to do anything about it? We're not able to do anything about the aliens pouring in across the border. I am here to tell you why. It is very simple. The government gets what it wants. There is a method to the madness, as we said, and we're going to explain that to you. Before we get into the older European history of Freemasonry, let's look at our own backyard. Is this a scene from Mississippi burning, or is this a picture of 1930s Ku Klux Klan meeting? Who are the men hiding behind the hoods, and why do they venerate the owl? Simple, the owl symbolizes wisdom because it sees things in the dark. No, this is not the Ku Klux Klan or Mississippi burning. This is your constitutional government burning. Let's remove the hoods and see who came to the party. 
the last two weeks of July of every year, a secret meeting is held in our country in Northern California by the world's most powerful people, bankers, politicians, industrialists, entertainment luminaries, all overworld figures. This group, directly connected with the European ruling elites, is commonly known as the Bohemian Society. Our now famous Council of Foreign Relations, the government behind the American government, is represented here, along with members of the Bilderberger Group of Europe. A meeting held once a year to decide a worldwide scale, your future, a shining example of true democracy carried on in the dark. Obviously here, your vote doesn't count. Appropriately, the owl is chosen as a symbol for this ilk, for it too is at home in the dark. The name Bohemian carries a dictionary definition as, quote, a community of persons who adopt manners, moors, conspicuously different from those expected or approved of by the majority of society and who disregard conventional standards of behavior. No wonder they want no input from you. More specifically American and even darker and equally as insidious is an organization that our own President George Bush belongs to, namely Skull and Bones, rightly understood to be America's secret establishment. The Bohemian Society, Skull and Bones, CIA, DEA, Mafia, and the IRS are just some of the groups that make up the true power behind the throne of America. Like all other kingships, America's power elite hinges on family blood, just as the structure, the power structure of the Mafia. To show that the word bloodline is not just a figure of speech, let's take a look at the actual facts. Carefully outlined here are the actual lineages of American presidents and their bloodline connected to European aristocracies of power. Starting from Edward II and the III of England, 28 out of our 42 presidents were connected by blood, including President Bush and Vice President Quayle, who were also in fact related to each other. Most of the 14 not connected by blood were connected by fraternal orders used by the bloodlines with only a few exceptions, notably in disruption, the Kennedys, seeking to disrupt this dynasty of power in America. Owing to their vast financial backing and personal intellectual charisma and much behind-the-scenes political maneuvering by his father, Joe Kennedy, John Fitzgerald Kennedy was inserted into the presidency, the idea being to disrupt the status quo by establishing a Kennedy Roman Catholic dynasty and thereby serving notice on the Freemasonic powers of this world of their unwillingness to cooperate and play by the unwritten rules. Justifiably feeling threatened, the established bloodlines of power in America removed the Kennedy threat. Official police records show that the John Kennedy assassination was closely preceded by and followed by as many as 100 assassinations, all of which were closely connected with the Kennedy family's rise to power. In our discussion of secret societies, Freemasonry, and occult orders in general, we want to talk about one that might be familiar to you, or perhaps you've heard about. It's called the Illuminati. We don't intend to spend a whole lot of time on the Illuminati, but just enough to familiarize yourself if you've never heard of the organization. It was founded in 1776 in the south of Germany by a man named Adam Weishaupt. He formulated his plans in relation to the House of Rothschild in England, Germany, France, Italy. The Rothschild banking dynasty behind the governments of Europe hired Adam Weishaupt to formulate a plan for the world at that time to accomplish certain goals for those in power. That plan came to be known as the Illuminati plan. Now, you can find most of this material in any library, any encyclopedia, under the word Illuminati, which comes from obviously the word illumine, to be enlightened, to be in the light. But there's a very important book 
that I'd like to bring to your attention called Fire in the Minds of Men. It's on the origins of the revolutionary faith. Fire in the Minds of Men, written, written by James Billington, is a profoundly important book in understanding the revolutionary radical movements of the world today and how they got here and who finances them and what they're really all about. I'd like to read to you a couple of paragraphs of importance, I think, in dealing with the occult origins of the organizational arrangements, how the occult organizations throughout the world, secret societies, are organized. In it, on page 87, he says, the story of the secret societies can never be fully reconstructed, and it has been badly neglected even avoided, one suspects, because of the evidence that is available repeatedly leads us into territory equally uncongenial to modern historians in the East and the West. In what follows, I shall attempt to show that the modern revolutionary tradition as it came to be internationalized under Napoleon, the Restoration, grew out of occult Freemasonry that the early organizational ideas originated more from Pythagorean mysticism than from practical experience, and that the real innovators were not so much the political activists as literary intellectuals, on whom German Romantic thought in general and the Bavarian Illuminati in particular exerted great influence. Here he was talking about the organization of the Bavarian Illuminati. You can't discuss the, the Illuminati without understanding the Jesuit order of the Catholic Church because Adam Weishaupt himself, the founder of the Illuminati, was in fact a Jesuit priest. He was not just an ordinary Jesuit priest though. In Bavaria, he continued to support revolutionary radical thinking against the church and has given to the world what has come to be known as the revolutionary tradition. In May 1st, 1776 is when Adam Weishaupt founded this order and that's why, of course, in Soviet Union and other communist countries that May 1st is considered to be the important day to all communist uh, revolutionaries because Adam Weishaupt founded the Illuminati on May 1st. This you will find, as I said, in any encyclopedia. The, uh, the bait that was laid by Adam Weishaupt for control of peoples was a very old and tried um, project. It was called democracy, a people's democracy. Adam Weishaupt, like many others before him, understood that democracy has never worked, is not working now, and never will work. Basically because of the reason that people, while they could be and are the power of any government, the people are always the power of a government. And that on the surface, democracy seems to be the best of all possible worlds. Democracy is a very bad form of government because the people can be misled. Because democracy means, it comes from the word demos, meaning mob. A mob in the street is a demos. Demosocracy, ocracy meaning rule. Demosocracy or democracy means mob rule. You might say that true democracy is like 35 whites hanging one black. That's democracy, the rule of the mob. Now, when we put it into more Americanized political terms, it's the rule of the people. And while that may sound good in print, the founders of democracy in our modern day form realize that the people can be manipulated into accepting whatever they want the people to, to accept. Let's go on with... Um, the subject of the Illuminati and its symbols. You will find the symbol of this secret society on the back of a one dollar bill. On the back of the dollar bill on the left hand side 
you will see the pyramid with an all-seeing eye, the eye of Horus, the Egyptian god of light, the Egyptian god, God's son. And you will see beneath the pyramid, 1776, spelled out in Roman numerals, and the um, words Anut Copias over the top of the pyramid. Anut Copias is translated to mean our enterprise. Anut, our enterprise. Copias is translated to mean has been crowned with success or is crowned with success. Therefore, Anut Copias is our enterprise is now a success. And then to find out what enterprise that was a success as on the bottom of the pyramid, Novus Ordo Seclorium, the new order of the world, the new world order. Well, if we remember that Germany was the home of the concept of the new world order, Adolf Hitler, his entire motivation was to establish a new world order. But in order to establish a new world order, you had to destroy the old world order. And that is exactly what Hitler set out to do, destroy all of the old aristocracy power bases in Europe and set up a new world order. Which brings me now to the Masonic lodges in south of Germany and their connections with the French Revolution. And there is tremendous amount of information on that subject, and we're not going to go into it today. Suffice it to say that there was a tremendous amount of Freemasonic activity in the French Revolution, in the Mexican Revolution, in the American Revolution, and on all other revolutions going on throughout the world. There are many, many connections between Freemasons in government, Freemasons in banking, Freemasons in fraternal orders, operating and working together. But we don't know that. And while our people are going into, at this time, into the Middle East, we're not aware of the fact that the, what is going on in the Middle East is a war between secret societies, factions, occult movements that we don't know anything about, has nothing whatsoever to do with oil, has nothing whatsoever to do with a, uh, a conflict that America should be concerned with. It has to do with some very old and ancient Freemasonic folklore. I'd like to show to you also from this book, I'd like to read to you from Fire in the Minds of Men in the introduction something very interesting and very important as we get into the symbols of the Illuminati and symbols of the Freemasonic orders of the world. On page six in the introduction it says, European aristocracy transferred its lighted candles from Christian altars to Masonic lodges. The flame of occult alchemists, which have promised to turn dross into gold, reappeared at the center of new circles, seeking to recreate a golden age. Bavarian Illuminati conspiring against Jesuits, French Philadelphians against Napoleons, Italian charcoal burners against Habsburgs. Always two sides. A young, let's see, a recurrent model for revolutionaries and early mystics and young Karl Marx and the Russians of Lenin's time was Prometheus, the god who stole fire from the gods for the use of mankind. The Promethean faith of revolutionaries resembles in many respects the general modern belief that science would lead men out of darkness into light. And here's the point. But there was also a more pointed millennial assumption that on the new day that was dawning, the sun would never set. Early during the French Revolution was born, quote, the solar myth of revolution, end quote suggesting that the sun was rising on a new era in which darkness would vanish forever. This image became implanted at a level of consciousness which simultaneously interpreted something real and produced a new reality. The new reality that they sought was radically secular and stringently simple. The idea was not the balanced complexity of a new American federation, but the occult simplicity of its great seal, an all-seeing eye atop the pyramid over the words Novas Ordosi Clorium. 
The seal that we have on an American dollar bill is an occult seal of an occult society pursuing an occult agenda. We are not aware of that. And that's what we at the International Research hope to do for you, is to make you aware of certain things which are going on in our government, in our world today, that you have not up till now been made aware of. It is not our purpose to spend too much time on this particular order of Freemasonry, the Illuminati, but we want to spend enough time so that you understand how it worked, what its purposes were, and how it affects us today. Because it's still with us today. It has taken on different forms in different countries, but it is still basically with the world today. Now, perhaps some of you are aware of this material that we're discussing right now, and maybe you're not. But to show that this is not just our understanding of things. We have gone back to records in the past as far back as the founding of the United States but, and comments made by George Washington, which we're going to read in a few moments. Here is an article from the Grand Jury of the State of Pennsylvania, published in 1800s, dealing with Freemasonry and the Illuminati and the problems that they were confronting in the State of Pennsylvania. As we said, George Washington mentioned the Illuminati, and I mentioned the Illuminati a few moments ago in relation to the democratic societies that were being founded in the United States. The Democratic Party today is an outgrowth of what we call the democratic societies of Europe. The democratic societies, while on the surface, sounds good. But when one looks further into what democracy means and how it actually works, democracy does not seem to work too well and there's a reason there was let me read to you from a california state senate first eleventh report state investigating committee on education published in nineteen fifty three of the california state senate and it talks about the illuminati you can get a copy of this from the international research if you wish in dealing with the uh, subject of communism, secret societies of communism, in 1953, on page 168, I'm going to do a little reading, but it's very important. I think it's important that you should hear this. On 168, the California State Senate goes on to say, since many intelligent persons, even in high official positions, do not appear to have acquainted themselves with the real nature and seriousness of communism, it is perhaps appropriate to give briefly some really informative, authentic data concerning it. Communism and Russia are by no means synonymous. Russia merely occupies the unfortunate position of being communism's first victim. Communism is synonymous with world revolution and seeks the destruction of all nations, abolition of patriotism, religion, marriage, family, private property, and all political civil liberties in the establishment of a worldwide dictatorship of the so-called proletariat, which is in fact an autocratic, self-constituted dictatorship by a small group of self-perpetuating revolutionaries. Over on page 169, the document goes on to say, so-called modern communism is apparently the same hypocritical and deadly world conspiracy to destroy civilization that was founded by the secret order of the Illuminati in Bavaria in May 1st, 1776, and that raised its hoary head here in our colonies at critical periods before the adoption of our federal constitution. The world revolution conspiracy appears to have been so well organized and ever continuing to be ever on the alert to take advantage of every opportunity presenting itself or that the conspirators could create. It is significant in this connection that as early as 1783, when unsettled conditions and dissatisfaction in some quarters had arisen in the American colonies, subversive anonymous sermons were circulated among the colonial army to incite dissatisfaction and rebellion. George Washington immediately called the army together and in addressing them used this significant language. 
This is taken from page 86, volume 4 of Marshall's Life on Washington, remembering that this is 1783, George Washington addressing the army. Says this, My God, what can this, ri what can this writer have in view by recommending such measures? Can he be a friend to the army? Can he be a friend to this country? Rather, is he not an insidious foe, some emissary perhaps from New York? Then the next paragraph, the California State Senate continues, It is plain that George Washington believed that the then center of this secret conspiracy, so far as this country was concerned, to be located in the city of New York. We know that there has been some sort of a manipulation of our government, our money, our institutions, and our lives by our government. But what we don't realize is that there is a, an agenda. There is a method to the madness. We want to look into this secret movements of the world and how they affect us in our private lives. And we may not think they affect us on a private level, but they do. They affect your children in school. They affect what your children learn. They affect what you learn from nightly television. There have been many movies discussing this publicly. Even George Washington, in his personal letters, mentioned the Illuminati and Freemasonry. George Washington himself was a Freemason. In response to a letter sent to George Washington in 1798, warning him about a Masonic movement operating in America, and this particular Masonic movement are referred to as the Illuminati. George Washington responded in a letter to the person saying that I have the favor of the 17th instant before me. And my only motive to trouble you with the receipt of this letter is to explain and correct a mistake which I perceive in a hurry I'm obliged often to write letters I have led you into. It was not my intention to doubt that the doctrines of the Illuminati, the principles of Jacobinism, had not spread to the United States. On the contrary, no one is more truly satisfied of that fact than I am. The idea that I meant to convey that I did not believe that the lodges of Freemasonry in this country as societies have endeavored to promulgate the diabolical tenets of the first or the pernicious principles of the latter if they are susceptible to separation. But that individual, individuals of them may have done it, or that the founder or instrument founded, or the instrument employed to found the democratic societies in the United States may have had, had these objects in mind and actually had the separation of the people from their government in view is too evident to be questioned. What George Washington was saying was that the mere fact that someone had charged that the Illuminati was operating in America, George Washington said, on the contrary, no one is more truly satisfied of that fact than I am. And then he proceeded to say that he did not believe that all Freemasons were involved in this plot, but that the founders of the Democratic Society in America, or the Democratic Party, as we call it today, in America, had the object in mind of the Illuminati's projects and had actually, the Democratic Party, George Washington said, actually had the separation of the people from their government in view. It is too evident to be questioned. That may explain why today that in a democratic country like America, the people make certain demands on the government and the government doesn't respond. The people want this, the government doesn't respond. The people demand that, the government doesn't respond. Because the whole concept of the democratic process in America was purposely to divide the people from their government so that the people could be out here working, taking care of their lives, feeding their children, and sending their politicians to Washington to look out for them when they got there they were already a members of certain fraternal organizations and all government was already taken care of so that the people have nothing to say about anything. And that's the point we're trying to make. That when you send politicians to Washington, D.C., they might just as well stay home. 
because the rhyme and reason of government has already been decided by secret societies and fraternal orders that you don't know anything about. In our discussion of the uh, Illuminati, we want to also, when talking about the dollar bill and the symbol on the back of the dollar bill, let me read to you from the Congressional Report published by the Congress of the United States, a Congressional Report, which we will be happy to provide you with if you'd like a copy. It talks about <clears throat> steps toward a British Union a world state and international strife. International strife is very much concerned with a world state and British Union. As we brought out before, Britain is referred to as God's kingdom, the United Kingdom. International strife which is happening throughout the world is part and parcel of preparing the world for God's united kingdom. And America is playing its part. That incidentally, as I think I mentioned before, provides the basis for racism in the world today. God's kingdom, of course, coming through Britain and America. America being ruled from the White House England being God's chosen to sit on Jehovah's throne for Jesus provides the world with a convenient racist philosophy and then we wonder in this country why the rest of the world doesn't seem to care for America a lot. There's a lot that we should know concerning the symbols on the dollar bill. Let me go to this congressional report published back in uh, 1940. It says on page 13, let me call your attention to the fact that on the reverse of the great seal of the United States, which appears on our dollar bills, you will find the exact symbol of the British Israel World Federation. This symbol is also carried on literature of other organizations promoting a world government and a world religion. At the bottom of the circle surrounding the pyramid, you will find the wording Novas Ordo Seclorium. It was this new order that was advocated by Clinton Roosevelt several hundred years ago, and recently in Philip Drew, and now followed by the executive. We understand that this whole concept of a new world order is a revolutionary idea developed out of occult Freemasonry. I want to go back to the introduction of fire in the minds of men and lay the foundation for something that I think you're going to find very interesting. Again, we want to requote re from page six in the introduction. It says, a recurrent mythic model for revolutionaries, early romantics, and young Karl Marx and the Russians of Lenin's time was Prometheus who stole fire from the gods for the use of mankind. The Promethean faith of revolutionaries resembles in many respects the general modern belief that science would lead men out of darkness into light. It's interesting that in New York City, in Rockefeller Plaza, at the very entrance to Rockefeller Plaza is an enormous statue of Prometheus. How appropriate. And when one understands how the Soviet Communist Party is financed, organized, and directed out of New York, then it will not be any great mystery as to why in front of Rockefeller Plaza we have the god Prometheus. James Billington in his book Fire in the Minds of Men explains that that is a symbol for the world revolutionaries. But it goes on to say in the introduction, but there was also a more pointed and millennial assumption that there was a millennium coming, a new world order, a millennium a thousand year reign, so to speak. A more pointed millennial assumption that on the new day that was dawning, the sun would never set. Early in the French upheaval was born the solar myth of revolution, suggesting that the sun was rising on a new era. This whole idea of the sun rising on a new era, the new dawn, the millennial assumption, we can see this openly 
being used today by our president in such newspaper clippings as the New World Order and how the world is now being formed into a new world order. We want to talk about that and what that means for you. As a matter of fact, here in the Daily News in our hometown, Bush urges unity in crises. Beneath it, it says, he sees the Gulf as a test of the new world order. That new world order is on the bottom of the dollar bill. It's on the bottom of the pyramid that's on the dollar bill. It's an interesting concept, and it's one that you should know about. Because what is going on in the Middle East right now is part and parcel of a Masonic movement. Freemasonry has made arrangements to organize direct finance and control different segments of society in our country and throughout the world. They have realized that in this country a black movements are moving into mainstream America, therefore the, the need arises for black leaders to be able to fall in line, to go along, to get along. And some of the black Freemasons that have been accepted into the order is, for instance, is Jesse Jackson, Andy Young, mayor of Atlanta, Kenneth Gibson, three-time mayor of the city of Newark, New Jersey, the late Harold Washington, mayor of Chicago, state senator Julian Bond, Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall, Marion Barry, mayor, mayor of District of Columbia. We see that Freemasonry uses all races to accomplish its objectives. In Freemasonry in Europe, it was the groups were called circles, and you had your circle of friends. There were five circles of friends, America being one of them, Italy, France, Germany, England, and America, the five circles of friends. They were called in the European Freemasonry the Olympiads, so that today the Olympiad organization symbol is five circles, the five Masonic circles of friends. Of course, the Audi has only four circles because America is not included in that project. The circles were, of course, the circle of friends in the Masonic League. The uh, other symbols on Freemasonry, the torch, of course, the Olympic torch is the torch of Prometheus, the god who stole fire for the service of man, and as we said in New York, in front of Rockefeller Plaza, you'll see the, the statue of Prometheus in his hand as the tor as a flame, the torch, the fire of revolution. The dime, of course on the mercury head dime, in the back of the dime you'll find the torch of illumination. It's still there today. The modern American dime has the torch of illumination. The Statue of Liberty has the torch. The, uh, of course, in all universities and colleges, we find in their symbols and emblems of universities have torches, standing for illumination of the Illuminati. As a matter of fact, when you are, uh, when you are graduate from a university, you become an alumni, which is taken from, obviously, alumni, Illuminati. You become an Illuminati. You become illuminated when you go to a university. <clears throat> uh, let's see, the torch is also used in uh, Amico Oil, the Benet Brit, Crises Magazine for Blacks. It is found many, many places. Chevrolet, just this year, in its Saturn division of General Motors, is putting out its aluminum car, not aluminum, but illumin car from the Illuminati, the, of course, when you go to college and university or even graduate from high school, you come out with a, as we said, a black robe, which is black for Saturn, the god of Hebrews, and the square martyr board. The square martyr board is, of course, Freemasons use martyr boards for their plaster. So that's why you wear a square martyr board when you become an alumni. It all has to do with Freemasonry. It all has to do with the 
control of education in this country, the control of our religious thinking, our minds, our government, our money, our lives, everything from your corner drugstore is influenced by Freemasonry, secret societies, occult orders, and politics of the scientific kind. Our founding fathers would probably turn over in their grave if they saw what happened to us and how we've been deflected from our purpose and our mission in the world to become nothing but pawns in a game. Even the Liberty Bell, the symbol of liberty, an equal Liberty Bell, identical with the same crack, is found in Moscow. It's a very famous Liberty Bell of Moscow with the same crack. It becomes known as a symbol, the symbol of the Brotherhood of the Bell. Bell being B-E-L, the ancient god in the Mesopotamian Valley, being the one that we call Belzebub or Belteshazzar or Yahweh. There are too many symbols, too many things going on in our world that we're just not aware of in this busy time in which we live, that it's time that we took time to look around us see the emblems of power, see the emblems and seals of our government. Look at the dollar bill instead of trying to earn one. Just look at one for a change. Look on the front at the Masonic emblems on it. Look at the back, the Masonic emblems there. Ask yourself why it is that our country operates the way it does. And is there a rhyme or reason to the way things happen? When you understand that General Motors, Ford Motor Company, and all other corporations in the world have an agenda, they don't just wake up every morning and decide what they're going to do. Large, very large international corporations have to make plans for tomorrow, for next week, for next year. When you have hundreds of thousands of people on a payroll, you can't afford to wait till the last minute to decide what you're going to do. The ship of state is far too large to turn around just overnight. It's like a giant ocean liner. The ship of state is a very large vessel. You have to make plans for it. You have to direct the people. You have to concentrate your power. You have to concentrate the people's attention on certain things in order to get them to go in the direction that you want them to. We are a very large and powerful people in America. So our masters have to direct our thinking for us and prepare us in advance for their plans, for their hidden agendas. And of course, like docile sheep, we just go along to get along because we don't know any more about it than what we see on television. There's about time that we look into this world that we live in and examine who we are, why we're doing what we're doing, and where we're going. That's the purpose for what we're trying to do. As we said before, we're not trying to explain in detail everything because we can't. But we're trying to make you aware that there is an enormous world of material out there that you should be concerned with and know about, and it's our purpose to provide you with that material. You will find that the many things that we have collected on the secret societies, our government, governments of the world, Freemasonry, are just fascinating. When we remember that Abraham Lincoln was the first president to break all diplomatic ties with the Vatican in the uh, 1860s, diplomatic ties continued broken with the United States until the coming of President Ronald Reagan. He reestablished full diplomatic ties with the Vatican, the first president since Lincoln to do so. His next official act was to travel to Europe at least three times to meet in private with the Pope. Uh, we were not told what was discussed. Later, the Pope uh, is a host to other summit meetings. And then, of course, Ronald Reagan leaves the United States to go to Europe to visit the war dead, we are told, and he ends up at Pittsburgh Cemetery, the burial spot for the Nazi SS officers. Uh, we have to wonder 
what was going on? Did Ronald Reagan not know that he was going to a Nazi burial spot? Well, of course he did. He's not a fool. And there are no such a thing as mistakes made by presidents. That is a cover-up. When we see things happening on the world scene and we say, well, the president made a mistake and the government made a mistake, you have to know that in a government the size of the one that governs the United States, they don't make mistakes. They're well-calculated moves. They know what they're doing. They have an agenda. They have an idea, a purpose. So they don't make mistakes. Ronald Reagan's going to uh, Pittsburgh was purposefully done. It signals something to secret societies. The Gulf crisis today, there are many innuendos and things that are being said which lead one to understand that there's more going on in the Middle East than what we're told about. And as we said before, it has little to nothing to do with oil, little to nothing to do with um, a threat against this country, because this country has no threat. We have some interesting titles, some very interesting, interesting book showing Freemasonry, the uh, Order of Malta with the Pope, Rome, the double-headed eagle, England, Freemasonic, symbols, all Freemasonic in relation to Christianity or should I say Jehovah's Witnesses brand of Christianity. We have such books as Christian by Degrees, Masonic Religion Revealed in the Light of the Faith in Jehovah, Testament for a New World, given to us being the seven books containing essential spiritual wisdom given to us by the Knights Templars. The table of contents reveals the book of Jehovah and the book of Jehovah's kingdom on earth, Jehovah's kingdom on earth with the Knights Templar emblem. We see that Jehovah's kingdom on earth is nothing more than a Masonic kingdom like the British United Kingdom. Jehovah's Witnesses, along with the Mormon Friends, Seventh-day Adventists, and as we said, all the other York Rite Masonic cults in America are spreading. They are the shock troops, so to speak, for Freemasonry to uh, take the message of the kingdom to the rest of us in this nation to accept their Masonic kingdom. And they, unbeknownst to themselves, are the forerunners for a new world order that they have no idea in this world is coming. They have been duped and they are too proud and arrogant to understand that. Here we have a book called The Teachings of Freemasonry. And we'll find that on the book of Teachings of Freemasonry you have the Jewish Star of David because in fact Freemasonry is Jewish. Freemasonry has always known that its greatest enemy in Western civilization is Rome. And that's why there has always been this animosity between the Catholic Church and Judaism. There has always been this animosity between the Catholic Church and Judaism. The Jews were persecuted in the old country, in Europe. And there still remains that animosity between Judaism and the Catholic movement today. But not because of religion, but because of the secret societies that operate behind both of those organizations. You might be interested to know also that the Pope's headdress the papal headdress is actually goes back to an ancient Jewish headdress. And of course the Pope wears the yarmulke and so does the uh, cardinals wear the yarmulke. But in particular, the Pope's headdress is shown here as Freemasonic. This is from a Freemasonic research book 
a volume on Freemasonry and their, the garb of Freemasons. And here we had one Freemason with the Jewish uh, breastplate and the papal headdress. We have other Masonic garb showing that when we see the Pope and we see the uh, priest, we see uh, religious movements throughout the world, their garb, it's all Freemasonry. I think those among us that uh, are concerned with the race issue throughout the world might be interested to know that here's another Freemasonic Brotherhood of Power, an expose of the secret Africana Brotherhood, Bernard Yun Brotherhood, Freemasonry. So when we see what's happening in South Africa, it is no great wonder that uh, South Africa's greatest friend is Israel. There is a famous song from the 1960s entitled, Does Anyone Know What Time It Is? We respectfully submit that it is time to wake up to the serious, the most serious problem that we face as a free society. Speaking of time, the new edition of the magazine tells us that it's high time, like the owl, to see things that have been kept in the dark. This will not be difficult because the truth has been hiding in plain view all along. In the Congress resides the American symbols of power, known in the dictionary as the fasci. The fasci itself is nothing more than an ancient symbol of an ancient priesthood from an ancient world. The axe, which explains why in the Second World War the powers of Hitler were called the Axis powers. The fasci was used by the priesthood of the axe in the ancient world, and by Adolf Hitler, by General Franco, Mussolini, and many other underworld fascist movements and mafia-style organizations, commonly understood to be called the untouchables. As I said at the beginning, and as even Time magazine has obviously had to admit, our leaders are the best that money can buy. They've sold you out to a hidden agenda a long time ago. Now you have just seen the faint outline. In the past tape, we have tried to at least enlighten your mind to a subject that has not been adequately dealt with. And that is the secret societies and subversive movements that are restructuring our world and using all sorts of guises and excuses. Everything from Jehovah's Witnesses to the Mormons with their Zion National Park and the New World Order and the racist philosophies that permeate the Western world. And it has become an idea whose time has come to explain and talk about these subjects. We, as we have mentioned before, we have adequate documentation for the things which we have said if you would like to inquire further for a further information, it is obviously a subject that cannot be covered very well in just a few tapes. But we hope that we have been able to at least present some concepts and ideas that may be fresh and new and important to look at. And we want to thank you for your time. And we want to leave you with this thought that this country was based on the fact that individuals had a right to know. We had a right to understand and to expect from our leaders the truth. We haven't received the truth from our leaders and we're not going to. They have their own agenda. They have their own ideas about what they're going to do and it doesn't involve you. All that you are expected to do is work and pay your taxes be a capital product for their system and not ask any questions. I think it's high time that this country begin to ask questions of its leaders, its misleaders, and as we said before, that we have the best religious and political leaders that money can buy. I think it's time that we begin to look at these subjects very deeply 
And if you want help on any particular facet that we've talked about, or if you want more information generally on these subjects, we will be happy to provide you with all of that information. Again, I have to say that what I have told you is what I've only told you. I haven't told you the rest of the story. It is an enormous story. We hope that we've been able to at least enlighten you somewhat, and we thank you for your time.